Hey, this is Chris at Vinylbaum, and we're gonna go over our maintenance procedure on a JV300. First thing we're gonna do is go into menu, maintenance, station, carriage out. Station maintenance will send the, the carriage about a foot over. To right around here in case you want to clean your wiper or just clean the cap and station. We're going to go to head maintenance and that's going to send the carriage all the way to the other end of the machine. Let's go in over there. The first thing I like to do is this, uh, this platen on the top that has the two pieces of foam. There's two little clips on here. Let's see without it. Push this back and pop it up. Push this one back and pop it up. So I pull on the, the piece of plastic as I'm pushing it back. It comes up a little easier. Kind of hard to do with one hand here. All right, so that comes up. I take that out of the way. It's the first thing I do. These pieces of foam on here have this ink on them um, and a, a lot of people I don't know if they do change it or they don't, but I always do. What happens as the wiper cleans the head, uh, some ink gets thrown on the bottom of the, the, the carriage, and these little sponges will, will suck up that ink. Over time, you'll see this start to, to get glossy after you get a lot of buildup, and sometimes when the carriage leaves the, the capping station, you hear it almost like tear apart. That's getting to a point where you need to replace these or what I do is I'll pop them off and I'll use the other side. You can see here, actually, yeah. Starts to, you start to get a little buildup on there and the ink, once this stuff dries and you get this buildup, it's almost like a, it turns into a plastic. And if for some reason you get a lot of buildup and it gets on the bottom of the print head, eventually it could easily scratch it. So the maintenance is super important. Uh, and what I do again take this off first and Then we're going to clean the capping stations. That's going to be the first thing to do We don't want to clean the capping stations with, with this in there if we get the solvent on these pieces of foam it starts to to dissolve to dissolve them and They do not work as efficiently Now that we have the caps exposed and The part we removed is a CP pad head assembly SPA 0257 that has the three pieces of foam and the piece of plastic. Again, we want to remove that first because if we do not and we get solvent on it, we're going to ruin it and it's going to cause problems. So remove that first. The, the foam swabs that you get, at first I like to go to these a lot. Uh, it just seems like for some reason I was drawn to them as opposed to the Q-tips. I'd have a big bag of these Q-tips and I wouldn't use them. Over time, the Q-tips are a lot more effective than you think. So I'll keep a couple in the solution. We'll wet the foam swab, and this is basically going to do a little bit of a, a pre-soak onto the cap. So we'll go around the edges here, get some of the solvent on there. Clean the wiper. We're not cleaning, but we're, we're breaking up the ink a little bit. Typically, I, I use one of these to soak this. I keep a couple of these guys on deck. The Q-tips, I'll go in there. We'll run around the inside of the cap. And we'll run around the outside of the cap. And you're going to see, you're going to get a, I just cleaned this not too long ago, but you're going to get a lot of buildup on there. And this is where it starts turning into a problem where that dried up, uh, once that solvent evaporates and you just have the pigment sitting there, it, it almost turns into a hard plastic. And that could definitely damage the bottom of the print head. That is super, that's almost like a piece of, that's why I would say it's kind of like a piece of tin foil on the bottom of that print head. And you can scratch that a lot easier than you think. So, these are relatively clean, but... I'll grab, grab another swab here. I'm going to go around 
till I go around the, the seal of that cap and I get a relatively clean Q-tip. Same thing with the wiper. So this looks pretty good at this point. I'm not gonna flip my pads again because I just did it, but these are in relatively good shape. We're gonna put this right back in. You wanna hook the back in first. I give it a little bit of a shim to make sure I'm locked in there. And I'll press these in and make sure these are locked in. All right, that's good to go. This part of the machine is done. The next part of this is cleaning the bottom of the carriage and around the print heads. We never clean on the print heads. What I typically do is I take these polyester wipes I use for my ViewTech and we'll purge ink out, we'll wipe the heads, do this all the time for that particular print head, the Seiko print head. This, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use these towels, the 100% polyester towels. We don't want any lint from cotton or any other color, kind of fabric or paper. We're gonna come over and you could be here all day if this is bad. That's kind of tough to see. You know, this is sort of clean, not really but on the right side there, that right print head, there's a lot of ink gummed up on the right side. We could sit here with the Q-tips or the foam swabs and, and rub that all day, but I like to use these polyester wipes. Let me show you what I do here. So I will get a little bit of solution on there and I'm going to go under and we're not touching the print head at all. All we're cleaning is the metal around the print head. And this is the ink that the, the wiper throws up around the bottom of the, the print head as it wipes. We want to clean all this up so we, we don't get all that ink turning into solids, turning into almost a, a, a really hard plastic-like material and damaging our print heads. So not too long. We're relatively clean there. I'll, I'll get the Q-tap and get in that little that crevice there. And the Q-tips are really good. If you do have some ink buildup around the print head, again, we're never gonna touch directly on the plate, but at least this gives you, you can rub on it like relatively firmly to, to get that ink buildup off. And that it will peel off the side of these print heads. And it can build up to a point where there's so much ink on there that the caps can't kiss the bottom of the print head properly and get good suction for doing a test print or doing a, a, an ink draw. So. And the other thing really important too, now that we, regardless of whether you're using a foam swab or you're using a Q-tip or whatever you're using, we now have a solvent on the, around the print heads. And what's gonna happen is the foam swabs that are over there in our, our CP head cap station, whatever that piece of plastic's called, the solvent is going to touch those and start melting that foam, so it's a problem. It'll it'll develop into a problem a lot faster than coming back and wiping. Any solvent you use to clean the ink off, you have to wipe that off. So we're going to come by, come back, and make sure these are all nice and dry. Again, not touching the print heads, never touch the print heads, for no reason. And you do have to get behind the print heads as well. Do 
at this point, we're looking pretty good. It's a little bit in the corner there, but for the sake of moving on, we're gonna send this, we're gonna send this back home. Now that we have all our supplies put back, everything's nice and neat. We have solution, we have the Q-tips, all the swabs put back. One note before I send this carriage back, and I had a problem and I lost a print head because of this. The, the media guides, sometimes one reason or another, these, these will build up with a little bit of ink and you might wanna take them off to clean them. And over here, I took this off. Oh, there it goes. But there's a little guard on here that goes into the end of the machine to make sure the, the media guides do not slip off. And I took this off one time, there's a thumb screw. And when I put it back on there, it wasn't quite tight and it was sticking up. And as the carriage was going back and forth, well, as soon as it went back and forth, the print head scraped this piece of metal and it was game over. That was about a $3,000 bill. This doesn't do anything. Take the field screw out or the thumb screw, let it drop down there, let it sit there. You don't need it. Get rid of it. It'll save you a couple thousand dollars. So when the carriage came back, uh, what we're gonna do is a soft cleaning and then a test roll, and we should be firing 100%. The other thing I do wanna note, since we're talking about this piece of equipment and it could happen and you, you think you have a, a bigger problem than you do, if you get a head strike, let me, we're gonna go into maintenance, station, carriage out. In this case, I wanna do station, station maintenance. This is gonna bring it out about 12 inches. So if you get a head strike here, I, something funny happened to me where I got a head strike and I, the next thing I printed was basically a funky kind of moray. It's, it's getting artifacts that look kind of odd. And I talked to one of my technicians and he told me, he goes, uh, you know, after the head strike, take a look at the two print heads on the bottom and compared to the platen. And you'll notice sometimes these head height adjustment screws are on there pretty snug. So if you get a head strike, that can push the carriage up and it'll ramp up on the left side and, and print at an angle. So, and in the back there's a little knob for the head height adjustment. And what we're gonna do, we're just gonna basically reset it. So you can visually take a look at it from the bottom, reset it, tighten it back up, and you'll be good to go. That should save you a service call, something to try if you're getting weird artifacts or a strange looking moray after a head strike. So that's about it. I hope you got something out of this. Chris at Vinylbaum, 